Hi, this is Ryan Bout. I'm playing 25 cent, 50 cent no limit on full tilt poker, and it is a six max game. I have a uh, nine deuce suited here, and it's an easy fold. Um, Sugar Nips has more than a full buy-in on the table, and uh, he's probably a regular. Um, I haven't really watched too much on the table except for Los Bellas limping a couple hands. Uh, PN671 showed up with a few random cards that were pretty weak, and I don't know if he was out of the blinds or not, but um, I think they might be weaker players. Um, and Sugar Nips probably is a regular as well as T-Berg and Pat J. But we're going to watch them a little closer to, to make sure. And we got another raise in the gun. And um, I, I would probably three bet here with a pretty wide range. It puts a lot of pressure on these guys. Even if they have a, a strong hand, um, there isn't much they can do about it. If they have a hand like ace-queen, they're, they're, they're just going to fold um, because it's a really tough, tough spot for them. But under the gun, generally do have a, a much stronger range. But even with a stronger range, they're only raising maybe like 10 or 12% of hands from that position. So um, they're only continuing with maybe 5% of them. And he got two calls, and he c-bet this flop. Um, he's probably not c-betting too wide in this flop when he gets two calls because uh, a lot of stuff hits it. Um, and Sugar Nets check calls, so he probably has uh, a, a pretty weak hand, uh, maybe like a, a weak ace, like ace-9, ace-8, ace-jack, and he doesn't want to put too much money in. And uh, T-Bergs is just three-barreling, so uh, it's very possible he has a, a boat of some sort, or maybe queen-jack. Um, but I definitely think he has a real hand here. And he gets a fold. Hit more garbage, and I'm not going to be playing this. <laughs> so what I would gather from that last hand is that Sugar Nips probably is capable of, of folding uh, a relatively strong hand, even though the board is a little scary. Um, I would assume he had an ace there. But the ace is really not that strong, given that a straight flush and full house are all possible, even though it strips. So I finally get a playable hand. Um, if PN raises, I could either re-raise or call. Uh, folding is not an option, but they're scared of me, so they feel my power. Um, I'm going to fold here. Uh, I think PN probably is raising a lot of hands on the button against a, a weak player in the blinds, but um, Jack-9 is not a very good hand, and even if even if uh, I do get a fold a lot of the time when I, when, when I get called. Uh, it doesn't flop all, all that well. I'm going to raise the button with 9-7 uh, off. I have a weak player in the blinds and a, a pretty good player who's probably going to respect the raise. Um, and you should be raising on the button with over 30% of your hands. Uh, a lot of people raise uh, too tight, and some people raise 100%, which is a big mistake. But 9-7 off is certainly a playable hand there. All right. Um, Heine... Uh, Auto posted his blind, uh, so he has you know any two cards, and uh, Ace Four is definitely way ahead of that. So I'm just going to continue on the flop uh, with a three dollar fifty cent bet, and I expect him to have you know absolutely nothing, a, a lot, um, and I get called. And firing again here is an option uh, because I turned a gut shot, and I feel like a lot of his hands are, are probably pretty weak, so I'm going to bet again. And I, I do risk uh, getting shoved on by, by a queen or a flush draw. Um, and I get called again. So I'm just going to completely shut down. Um, if he has a flush draw, I'm, I'm, I might be good. And I'm never getting a queen to fold. And he turned a pair. But um, if he hadn't turned a pair, the, the turn is actually uh, pretty good card for me to, to fire a second barrel. A lot of people like to uh, defend pocket pairs out of position, but I really hate it. Um, Pat has been pretty tight so far, and I have no reason to believe he's a weak player. Against a weak player, I, I would play this deep, but um, I just have a lot of trouble finding uh, easy ways to play a hand like pocket fours out of position against players who, are, who know what they're doing. Um, you just don't win enough money when you flop a set, and when you don't flop a set, it's impossible to play because there's always three overcards.
and I get another easy raise on the button with Ace-10 off. And I get re-raised by Sugar Nips, and he did it pretty fast, and he also did it uh, bigger than the pot. Um, a lot of times when people re-raise, uh, they just, you know, mash the pot button. Um, but uh, he's out of position, and he probably has a, a, a pretty decent hand that he uh, was going to 3-bet uh, any raise from before him, but he doesn't want to call because it's, it's probably pretty vulnerable. But um, I don't think I want to be 4-betting there as a bluff or calling because uh, my hand doesn't play well against most of the hands he has, like pocket 10s, pocket jacks, ace-king, ace-queen. Um, I, I would say hands like those are his most likely hands. And if I 4-bet, I feel like he's shoving almost all of them. And here Sugar Nips is making a pretty standard play for good players. Um, the weak player at the table is limping in. He's trying to get it heads up, uh, heads up in position against him. And he doesn't want to play you know, a three-way pot. He wants to play a heads up pot against uh, who presumably one of the weaker players at the table. But he gets called by um, somebody we think is uh, not very good because he posted uh, in the cutoff. Uh, and that's usually a, a pretty bad play. And that's a really good board for him to continue continuation bet with um, pretty much anything he has. Um, both these guys are, are pretty loose players, and they could have literally any two cards um, that are like suited or connected or whatever. And this board really doesn't hit all that many hands. So um, if he had nothing, it's it's a really good spot to bet, even three way. Uh, a lot of times you don't want to you don't want a continuation bet into a lot of players, but. Um, on a board like this, it's it's the optimal time. One one high card and two low cards is a really good flop to see bet into three or four players, even if you have nothing. So let's bell slimps in again. Um, we're just going to check our option. There's there's no reason to inflate a pot with a pretty weak hand against them. Um, I mean. I'm going to bet out because I feel like he has a lot of hands that are just no pair, no draw, and uh, my hand is probably the best hand, but if I check and let him bet, um, I don't want to go check calling a bet with you know a very weak hand like uh, Queen 8 off, um, and I also risk him checking behind and hitting a pair on the turn, so I might as well just take the pot down there. Here I have pocket threes. Um, I have a few options here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fold um, like I did in the small blind, but uh, I'm going to re-raise because I have position and it puts a lot of pressure on Pat. And um, I feel like there's, there's a lot of boards that are good for me to bet where he doesn't flop a lot if he calls. And uh, he's going to fold a very wide percentage of the time. And if I just call pre-flop, uh, he can put a lot of pressure on me by just betting the flop and betting the turn again. So uh, I like to re-raise in spots like that, but, but calling is certainly fine. Um, a lot of times if you have a, a bad image and you're re-raising a lot, then you're just going to get no credit with it and uh, you might as well just call. But that was a good spot for a re-raise as I haven't three bet once when, when I've been at the table. And here nines is a, a standard raise in the, in the cutoff. And I got called by Heine, who's you know, a very loose player and um, I will not be folding. So I'm, I'm going to bet 225 into 310, and if he raises, then I'll just probably just uh, re-raise and get it in. If I hit a hand like aces, I might call and let him fire a second barrel, but nines is too vulnerable. Uh, there's too many bad cards on the turn. But here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check behind. Um, I could easily get value from worse hands on the river, and that's a great river card. Um, I'm only losing to a few things, and 10-9 is very much reduced because of the fact that I have pocket nines. Um, and this is a pretty trivial call because he doesn't have 10-9 all that often. He could have 5-6. He could be value betting an 8. Um, he could be just very random. He does have a jack sometimes, like jack 10, but uh, I think it's a pretty easy call. And we can see he had pure nonsense. Um, here king jack suited doesn't really play all that well against under the gun razors. Um, if I was on the button, I would probably call it, but 
Um, I'm going to fold. Uh, it's, it's a fairly tight fold, but there's a few players behind me um, who might re-raise like uh, sugar nips. And uh, I feel like when I start getting a lot of action on, on different boards, uh, I'm, I'm usually dominated by the under the gun raise. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of tight fold. I wouldn't fault anybody for calling, especially with Los Bellos and Heine, who are probably going to be calling with hands that we dominate. Um, so, if, so if PN has a hand like pocket sevens and the board comes jack high, um, we, can, we can get a lot of value from, from these two players who are probably going to call a very wide range. But king jack suited is, is pretty tough to play against somebody who might be raising like 10% of hands from that spot. We're also a little deeper than 100 big blinds now. And uh, as, as you get deeper, you want to be playing more and more hands in position um, because it makes it really hard for, for the people out of position against you because you can put a lot of pressure with a lot of big bets on them. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm still early position. He's the earliest position. So I decided to, to take the tight route and fold. And he C-bet this flop. And this is, again, another good flop to C-bet multi-way. You know, queen 7-7 seven, seven doesn't connect with very many hands. Um, and Pat presumably has a queen here, given how he's played his hand. And PN could really have a very wide range of hands. And I'm a little shocked that he didn't, that he didn't bet the river because um, he can represent a lot of stuff. And he's almost never, never good. Um, when he gets called by Pat, Pat is not really calling with sixes because sixes has sixes through deuces uh, runs into the problem of getting counterfeit sometimes. And when you get counterfeit, you're just, your hand goes to, to crap really fast. So um, the worst hand he's probably calling with is pocket eights. And Pat has, or PN has that. So um, he really has to worry about you know, pocket nines, tens, jacks, and uh, a queen. So he never has the best hand there. And he could certainly get a lot of folds with the king on the river. That's a good, that's a good card to barrel against a lot of players. Because, um, I mean, they're always afraid of ace-king or king-queen or aces um, that check behind the turn for pot control. Um, Pat called a min-raise from Los Bellos. Um, I, I think I could make a play here a decent amount of the time, but I feel like Los Bellos should be c-betting this flop a lot. So the fact that he didn't makes me a little worried uh, that he actually has a hand. Um, I actually would rather make the play against Pat, but I didn't because of Los Bellos. I think he would bet there most of the time. And the fact that he didn't, I think he's trapping. And Pat's thinking about it here. So he could have, you know, maybe a queen or king jack that, that rivered the pair, that rivered the straight. Um, but... Maybe he has an ace also, but I, th I think he would bet the turn with an ace, given his trips against a, a weak player. So I finally pick up uh, a premium hand. <clears throat> and one of the weaker players limps in again. So <clears throat> I'm going to raise to 250 because I'm out of position. If I was in position, I would probably just pot it. Um, but this is a little more than pot. And of course, I don't mind getting called in two spots because uh, Los Bellas isn't a strong player himself. Um, but playing the pot heads up is fine as well. <clears throat> I'm going to bet $4 here, and then I'm just going to fire again on the turn if he calls. Um, there's a lot of hands that he might stick one barrel um, and then fold to the second. And, of course, you know, I'm, I am beat here a, a lot, but I have two overs and a flush draw, and I could be a favorite against a hand like Queen Jack. He might be bluffing. He might have a worse flush draw. Um, this is a very easy shove. And I'm a favorite. Um, and now I'm drawing dead. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we see that he's he's making a lot of uh, a lot of very weak plays with a lot of uh, weakish hands. So, normally, what I would do is I would make a note, and I like to to use the color coding system. Um, and I usually make players that I want to play hands against uh, blue. Um, here, if I raised, I would raise to, to one dollar instead of one fifty because there's, there's a short stack in the big blind, and he's just waiting to pounce on a raise. Um, and if somebody raises in front of him, he's going to shove a pretty wide range. So normally I raise to three x on the button, but with short stacks in the blinds, I like to raise smaller to give them less incentive to shove over me. Um, if I raise to one fifty, he's winning two twenty five from the pot when I when I fold. 
Uh, but if I race to a dollar, he's only winning 175. So he has to worry a lot more because he's, he's risking the same amount to win a lot less. I'm going to fold here again. I also think that, that raising pot size with, with short sacks on the table is uh, a mistake. You're, you're giving them too much incentive to shove a lot of hands, and it really ruins the play on the table. Um, when, by the time it got to Mental Donkey there, there was $4 in the pot for him to win, and he only has 950 left, so he's going to shove a wide range of hands there, um, and it's correct to do so, and it really makes it hard for other people to play hands at the table. So um, when short stacks are on the table, you, you, you want to make your raise sizes a little bit smaller than pot. But when everybody's full stacked, uh, raising pot is certainly fine. I'm going to give Los Bellos a note as well. It's just nice to remember. Um, in these days, games are a little harder than they used to be, so it's important to know what games are good and what games aren't. And I always try to find games that, that have um, a player I want at the table. Um, because if you're playing at a table with five very good players, even if you're a little bit better than them, there's, there's usually a softer game running. So um, game selection is a really important thing. If I was playing in a, a game with special prop bets, that would be a good hand. Um, a lot of games, especially live games, people like to play the seven deuce game where you know you can win an absurd amount of money every time you win seven two, win a hand with seven two and show it. But fortunately, that doesn't happen online. People don't pay you to play that hand. When the button raises, I like to defend a pretty wide range um, because uh, it sort of sets a precedent. And um, you really get a good idea of how people play hands when you're playing them uh, heads up pots, um, especially with a hand like Jack-10 that's pretty easy to play. Um, I feel like I can get a good read on him, like what, what flops he likes to check behind, what flops he bets a lot. Um, and I think I'm going to, to make a play at this pot. Um, there's a few options for me. I could have uh, I could have let out at the pot, but I don't really like that because uh, if I had an eight, wouldn't I check and try to let him bet? So I prefer either check raising the flop or check calling and then betting it on a later street. And once he checks, uh, he's giving me the go ahead to, to bet and try to take it down. Um, now, if he calls, he probably has a pretty marginal hand here. Uh, if he raises, I'm just going to fold. Uh, the odds I get trapped are pretty high. But if he calls, it's, it's very possible he has a hand like ace high that he's just trying to show down for, for one bet. And then I would probably fire a second barrel on a lot of rivers. And if I rivered a jack or a 10, I would certainly value bet. Now, Heine limped in, and I have a very weak hand uh, with 8-5 offsuit. But I'm getting 5-1 to one from the pot, and Los Bellos is not very likely to raise at all. Um, and I have a chance to play a pot with two of the weaker players at the table, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump at that chance. Um, it's always good when you can try to play pots, uh, as many pots as you can, with players who aren't as good as the regulars. Um, here I flop bottom pair, but it's a pretty dry board, so I'm just gonna check, um, and I'm not gonna call it bad. I'm just gonna fold. It's not the type of board that I want to be putting in a lot of money in, or even any money uh, against these guys. I'm gonna wait until I have a, a, a better hand than that and try to get a lot of value out of it. Queen two off, uh, way too loose to raise, uh, especially with the short stack and the blinds. I think it, there are times when it's useful to buy in short stacked. Um, most players these days uh, don't really like short stacks because they, they really ruin the action in games. Um, and All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-raise here again. Uh, it's the second time I'm re-raising re Pat. Um, this time he's raising from early position, but I think I can rep a lot of hands. And also a lot of players sometimes think that the second re-raise is a big hand. 
because you've already set the precedent that you re-raise them and then you're waiting for a pretty good hand to re-raise them again. Uh, but it's, it's pretty likely that Pat actually has a, a big hand here. I, I really think he would be folding most of his marginal hands just because it's uh, more likely I have a hand here. So I'm just going to fold, obviously. I mean, once he puts in that fourth bet, it's an easy fold. But I think it's a good spot to three bet him. Um, some pe I mean, like, it, people have different opinions on that. Some people think that the more you three bet, uh, the, the second time is always weak, and then other people think that the second time is always strong. Uh, but I generally think that regulars usually think the first time is weak and the second time is strong. So um, I tried to take advantage of that, but unfortunately I ran into what was almost certainly a big hand. Um, um, sometimes there are some advantages to buying in short stacked, uh, especially in Parliament Omaha, when you can get a situation like the player raises under the gun, then another player calls, and then you shove all in, and then everybody at the table calls because... With four cards, you have a lot more possibilities. And then after the flop, the, the player with the best hand is usually going to bet and the other player is going to fold. So now, even though you're up against the best hand, um, you're now getting three to one on your money and your head's up at showdown. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to imagine that you're over 25% to win in those situations. And also, you're going to have some really strong hands in your range and you, you, you have a lot of hands uh, in PLO in general. So that's, that's definitely one advantageous situation to buy in short. Um, in no limit, if I generally think that if you think you have an edge on people that you should be buying in to cover them. And uh, most players these days tend to not like short stacks because they ruin games. Um, it makes it really hard to raise a lot of hands. It makes it hard to call with weaker hands in position and really play position. Um, because as you shorten the stacks, position becomes less and less important. So before Los Bellos limped in, and we had queen two off, queen eight offsuit, um, and I just checked my option. But now I have ace queen, which is way ahead of his range of hands. So I'm gonna try to put some more money into the pot because I have the best hand. And now I'm just gonna bet, bet, bet. Um, I'm gonna bet three dollars on the flop and try to get it all in by the river. Um, I would have bet about eight dollars on the turn and then just put the rest in on the river. And I think he's gonna call with you know any ace. He might call me with a, a jack for, three, for two or three streets. He might put in a raise with a hand like king, queen, or king, ten, um, or just bluff me. So I think it's, a, it's an easy bet there, and it's an easy raise preflop to try to put more money in with a, a good hand that plays well. If I had a hand like pocket fours, I don't think I would raise there because it's very hard to play against a loose player. Um, you know, he flops a pair, and he just gets real stubborn, and he's not going to fold. And pocket fours just doesn't flop big enough to, to make him fold or... To, to hit enough boards to get value out of them, but a hand like ace queen does flop a pair very often, or you know, a gut shot, <clears throat> a lot of different hands, and I can represent stuff on the turn and other things. So um, it's an easy raise preflop. And I would probably raise there with with hands as weak as like queen jack suited, queen ten suited, just hands that play really well against them. Now that's that's something we we really like to see. Um, uh, money going to a player we're, we're, we're targeting. But it really was just a total cooler. It was top two versus a straight on a blind versus button battle. So I get jack five suited here. And a lot of times when only weak players remain in the hand, um, I'll, I'll raise a lot of really weak hands just to try to play more pots with them. But with the short stack in there, um, he's just going to ruin my day. Um, by shoving like 15 to 20 percent of hands there and it just makes it a lot worse to raise there with jack five suited than if if all three of the, the players remaining were weak players. And I got eight seven off suit and um, it seems like PN likes to raise under the gun but with a short stack in there I don't think he's I mean it's not it's also not like tournament poker in tournament poker um, people love stealing from under the gun because there's a, a huge incentive to um, there's more than a big blind in the middle with, with antes, so by picking up the pot, they're winning over you know, almost two and a half big blinds, and they're repping a very strong hand, so they don't often get played back at. But in a cash game, um, you know, the pot's about half the size preflop, so people just have no incentive to, to be repping a strong hand um, in a zero pot. So um, I, I really doubt that he's raising a wide enough range to make it okay for me to make a lot of moves there. 
Uh, so that wasn't the best session I've ever played. Um, I tried a bunch of plays, uh, made some moves, and nothing worked. Um, but that's how poker goes. Uh, sometimes it's going to work out, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, when you just run into hands all day, or you get unlucky, uh, you're going to lose. But I think I made good plays today.